Hello and welcome. I am Lillian Agbeyegbe, your friendly community health educator, and I'm happy to welcome you to this debut edition of your public health professional and you. This conversation series is coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Public Health Association. The Maryland Public Health Association is the state chapter of the American Public Health Association. The Maryland Public Health Association has been around for a very long time, 1955 to be precise. And so as part of our vision, healthy Marylanders living in healthy communities, we are having this series to close the gap between you, our community members, and your public health professionals. Every month, we will have a conversation with a public health professional working right here in Maryland. We'd like to understand what they do, how that benefits you, why you should be interested in what your public health professional is doing. And of course, because this is coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Public Health Association, we'll tell you some more about the association, how you can join if you're not a member. All of this is public health. So as you can imagine, we'll be telling you about public health and how you can go into the profession. If that's not the field that you're working in now, can you change career mid course? We never know. But the public health professionals we are going to be talking to are going to tell us all about it. They're going to tell us about the work that they do, the connection of the work that they do to you, members of the public, and how you can be in their shoes one of these days. Again, I am Lilian Agbeyegbe. This is the debut edition of your public health professional on you coming to you courtesy of the Maryland Public Health Association. On this first episode, I am delighted to welcome Ms. Stephanie Clapper to this conversation. Ms. Stephanie Clapper is a deputy director at Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition. She has been in this field. She has been a member of the Public Health Association for a couple of years now, and she's working out in the community. But I'm not going to tell you all about her. I'm going to let her tell you about herself. Ms. Klopper, you're welcome to this conversation. Well, thank you so much, Lillian, and, and thank you for having me. Great. Um, yeah. So I, I'm Stephanie. Uh, I am deputy director at Maryland Healthcare for All, and I've been there since 2014. Our mission is quality, affordable health care for all Marylanders. Uh, and MDPHA has been such a wonderful partner in the coalition's work. We've done so many great things together that I'm excited to talk about. Um, and I think I've been a member of MDPHA since 2018 and um, a member of the advocacy committee for just as long. And it's just been such a wonderful experience so far. Awesome, awesome. So first, let's start about your work at the Maryland Healthcare Coalition for All. What do you do there and how does the public care to benefit from your work? Sure, so um, we've done a number of things over the years. We've done things like increase the tobacco and alcohol taxes in Maryland. And we've, what we've done with that money is even before the Affordable Care Act went into effect, we were able to expand Medicaid to hundreds of thousands of Marylanders. Plus, the, the tax increases themselves led to reduced smoking rates, saving tens of thousands of lives, uh, and also reduced um, binge drinking and uh, drunk driving and uh, STD transmission. So. Um, that's part of what we've done since the Affordable Care Act went into effect. We've been working to uh, make sure it's implemented well. Um, we've been building on it, making it work better and better, while also uh, during the Trump administration, um, defending it from federal attacks. So um, while we've been defending it, we've actually been taking steps forward in Maryland to make it even better and have been using that um, as a blueprint for the rest of the nation and other states to, to follow our lead. Um, and finally, one of our big focuses is um, prescription drug affordability. We were able to enact the first in the nation prescription drug affordability board um, and health equity. We were able to pass the Health Equity Resource Act, which directs tens of millions of dollars to underserved communities in our state to um, improve health outcomes and reduce health inequities. 
so very impressive. And I hear three things, three things stick out to me in your conversation about how that public health professional in you was showing up in these things that you are doing. So increased taxes, I hear advocacy that because that doesn't come about in a half. It takes a lot of strategic work. So tell me about the public health professional as an advocate. What does sure. that do? Sure. So I think that one of the most wonderful things about public health is how, how great advocates we are. Um, and I know that the advocacy committee of NBPHA works really hard, especially during the legislative session in Maryland, uh, in order to um, partner with other organizations that are working on key issues, um, make sure that our voices are heard at, at the committee hearings, uh, make sure that legislators are hearing from public health professionals. Professionals to, to ensure that our voices are heard and, and that they know where MDPHA stands on these critical issues. Um, and so I would encourage anyone interested in, in public health advocacy to look into the advocacy committee because um, it's a really great way to, no matter how experienced you are or you aren't in advocacy, um, there's a place for you there uh, and, and there's a way for you to get involved. Great. I also heard a little bit about collaboration in there. So public health professional, you get your work done through collaboration. You're actually at a coalition. So how important is collaboration to the work of public health? And how do Marylanders get to benefit from the fact that you are working together with a bunch of other people? So we think that it's crucial. Um, first, within MDPHA, I think you have people from so many different um, professional and personal backgrounds. And that only brings strength because of all the different perspectives we bring. It helps expand the types of issues that we work on. Um, and it helps bring the personal voice to some of these issues. You know, legislators um, often hear from people about what the, the statistics are and, and the policy reasons for doing things, but individual members of MDPHA can also tell their stories about what they've seen in the field or what they've experienced in their personal lives and make, bringing it that personal story can make a really big difference. Um, and then beyond MDPHA, collaborating with other organizations is key. Um, we use a, a Maryland Healthcare for All, we use a six step process to um, advocate for our proposals. And one of the steps is building a broad coalition with as diverse a coalition as you can from all across the state. So it's made up of um, faith, business, labor, healthcare, uh, and community organizations. And they're all working towards the same goals. So that is so awesome. Now, your average Marylander doesn't see you. And when they hear public health, they're like, uh, I don't know who these people are, but you're actually working for them, aren't you? And all of these initiatives are things that the regular Marylander is benefiting from. So can you work us through how a Marylander who has never met you or who will never meet you benefiting from the work that you're doing? Of course. So one of the things that we want to make sure is that every Marylander has access to quality, affordable health care. Uh, and, you know, clearly that benefits the people who get covered um, because they're able to get the health care that they need. But actually, it also benefits all Marylanders because um, one of the sad things is that when people don't have access to health coverage, they often end up having to wait to get care until they need to go to the emergency room. And the emergency room is the most expensive place possible to get health care. And when people go and get their care in the emergency room, um, the uncompensated care that can often result means that everybody's health insurance premiums go up. And so the cost for everybody goes up. And so the, the work that we're doing to ensure that everyone has access to health coverage um, actually helps all Marylanders. So because you, as a public health professional, you're advocating for increase in taxes, you're able to get money to provide services that every Marylander can access. Because you're working in this coalition and able to expand healthcare services, you're working to make sure that Marylanders are not picking the tab for uninsured people from high cost coverage. Will that be a correct summary of some of the things that you're doing? Yeah, and one thing that I would add to that is it's it's definitely there are ways to do it beyond increasing taxes. So um, one example is that there are a lot of people who are already eligible for free or very low cost health coverage, 
but they don't realize it. And so with MDPHA um, and Maryland Healthcare for All, we were able to advocate for uh, a checkbox to be added to both the state income tax return and the unemployment insurance form that asks, do you have health insurance? If not, do you want someone from Maryland Health Connection to help connect you with health coverage? And so these ways that you know, you can capture people, you know, most people fill out an income tax return. Most people who are applying for uninsur the unemployment insurance are um, stressed out. They might not know where to look for healthcare and it might not be the top of their priorities, but putting it front and center for them and then helping them connect with someone who can get them enrolled, that's a, a key place to capture people um, and get them enrolled in healthcare. And so I, I'm seeing the process there. You identify a need the people who can be covered, who are not being covered, and you sort of also identify the solution. There's a checkbox that we can add to these forms that can provide us this information, but it's not there right now. And so you went to work, the group not, you know, went to work, advocated for it, and now we have this checkbox in this form that makes it easy for us to collect information and people who need health insurance and who qualify for it can have somebody reach out to them and walk them through the process. Yes, that's exactly right. And it's already helped thousands of Marylanders to be able to get that health coverage. It's helped, um, it, you know, it, it's helped people during a really critical time as we've seen during the COVID-19 pandemic, what happens when you don't have access to healthcare. Um, and even during that time, thousands of Marylanders were getting enrolled um, through the easy enrollment program. And it's interesting that you spoke about COVID-19 because during the pandemic of COVID-19, people were like, I don't know who these healthcare professionals are. I don't see them when I go to the hospital. But it looks like public health professionals are able to help members of the public, Marylanders, even though they don't work in the hospital. You don't work in the hospital, do you? No, I do not. But you, the work that you do is able to benefit people and has impact on their health outcomes. That's right. That's right. And um, I think that one of the great things about public health is, again, talking about those partners that you work with. And so um, it's important to partner with trusted voices within communities um, in order to advocate for the change that you want to see. And then also once that change passes, to make sure to celebrate with them um, and to communicate the information so that, um, so that you know, regular Marylanders know about what's available to them. Awesome, great. Well, let's let's talk about getting here, getting to be a public health professional, getting to be an advocate, getting to be at the Healthcare Coalition for All, and getting to be in MDPHA. How did you start off? Did you always know that um, you were going to work in this field? And I see an opportunity for an interesting conversation, actually, because you have a master's in social work, but you work in public health. And so What's that intersection between social work and public health? How do you prepare for one or the other? It's a good question. So within social work, there's what we call micro and macro social work. In macro social work, um, one, of, one of the key components is um, advocacy. And so, and it's all about making sure that the most underserved in our communities are well cared for and have a voice. Uh, and so um, the way that I came into this work was I was taking a policy and advocacy course uh, during my graduate program. And I learned about Maryland Healthcare for All because uh, there was a book and a couple of chapters from that book were assigned in my class called The DeMarco Factor. Um, and I read about all of this great work that I saw this organization had done um, and realized that I lived very close by. And so I reached out to them um, I started volunteering for them and then eventually I was hired to work there. And so um, I actually learned about it through my social work coursework. Um, and uh, actually 60% of our staff have masters of social work uh, and we have regular um, social work students uh, internship program that comes through our office. And so um, I think that, you know, social work is a great pot pipeline to public health. I think there is a lot of overlap there. Um, and I'm so grateful to be part of MDPHA because, you know, there are professionals from all kinds of different backgrounds there. And I think we all bring a different perspective that makes um, our collective voice stronger. So what do you, that is so very impressive. So what did you start from though? So because it was this textbook you were reading when you were in your graduate program, but it looks like you didn't start 
when you were young, did you think that this was the work that you're going to do? Did you always want to help people? Did you know public engagement will be an avenue for you to use your passion or calling? Or how did all of that, how did you grow up and end up in this field? Yeah, so I think that I always wanted to try to make the world a better place. Um, I didn't know exactly how I would get there. I thought about um, going into politics. I thought about uh, doing, um, you know, PhD level research. I thought about a lot of different things. Um, and I, one of the reasons I, I went to graduate school for social work was because I knew that there was a really wide variety of places that you could go from the School of Social Work. And so I thought I'll be exposed to all of these different avenues and I'll figure out what the best place for me is to make a difference. And um, when I read about the work of um, this organization, I just thought this looks like a, an effective organization. They have a really clear strategy. They actually have a six step strategy for how they get policy proposals enacted. Um, and I want to be part of that. And so um, I guess I, I always knew I wanted to make a difference, but I, I didn't know the most effective way to do that. And then when I found it, it just fit. Awesome. So you don't have to have chosen it. You don't have to have known. You can encounter it and you can come into it and fit like a glove. So I know you've said this a lot of times in this conversation about MDPHA, but how did you find out about MDPHA? How did you join? Because believe it or not, we have public health professionals in Maryland who are not members of MDPHA. Right. So I was lucky because I had an in. One of my colleagues was a member of MDPHA and told me that I should really join. Um, and so that's how I learned about it. Um, but I think that it's a great organization. I try as much as I can to uh, share about it, you know, in Facebook groups um, and, you know, on social media. Um, I tell people, I tell our interns about it. Uh, and I especially talk about the advocacy committee because I think it is such a great way to, um, in, a, in a short amount of time, take the ideas of what you think should be and, and immediately start working on them with other people and seeing, you know, how can I, how can I do this here in Maryland? You know, what, what is the policy avenue in order to make this a reality? Um, and so I think the advocacy committee is a great place to start. I know I'm biased because I've been a member of it for four years, but it really is wonderful. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think that it'd be great if, um, you know, every public health professional in Maryland could know about MDPHA and, and consider um, what, what benefits it brings. Great. I was going to say, I have to put in a plug for the communications committee because that's the one I belong to that's putting up this conversation series together. So, but we work closely with the advocacy committee. So I think that that's in order. So as we're rounding up, and we're very excited that we could have you on our meeting edition, a debut edition of this, your public health professional and you. And one of the things that we're looking to do in this conversation series is to bridge the gap between the public and the public health professionals who don't know us. So as we round up, I'm going to ask you to speak to three things. Um, you said them before, but just in summary now, your message to somebody who's interested in becoming a public health professional, what do you want to say to them? your message to a public health professional who's not in MDPHA, what's your final pitch to them? And your message to the general public about the value of your public health professionals to you in the state of Maryland. So. Okay, so for those who um, are trying to decide how to pursue a public health profession, I would say um, make sure to network, make sure you're talking with people who are public health professionals. Public health professionals, you know, they want to help people who are interested um, in, in, in this profession. And so um, talk with them, learn more about it. If there's something that gets you excited, pursue it, even if it's something different than you initially thought. You know, if there's something that really moves you and speaks to you um, in your heart, you know, pursue it because you don't know where you'll end up, but I bet it'll be somewhere you want to be. Um, for folks who are in the public health profession um, and, you know, want to learn about MDPHA, I think that's a great idea. I think that um, it's always good not to work in isolation, but to come together with other people with common interests. Um, and especially with the importance of what public health professionals do 
our voices are more powerful if we work together on it. Um, and I forget what the third question is. Red one, sorry, I shouldn't have piled it up on you. But the third one is the public, you know. So we public people, we don't we, public health professionals don't wear uniforms, you know, so they don't actually stand out and people are sort of like, I don't know who you guys are, I don't know why you're saying public, how do you benefit us? So just a word to your pop, you know, to the general public about the work that we do and how that's helpful for the general public. Okay, great. Uh, so I think that, you know, public health, is, I think everybody probably should know what public health is by now. Um, you know, public health professionals have been vocal and active during the pandemic and trying to make sure that people had access to the services that they need. Um, and I think that, you know, it's, it's very valuable that we come at this from an angle of really just wanting the public to have the health resources that they need and accessible to them. Um, and uh, I also think that, you know, make your voices be heard. Um, it's, it's great to see what um, MDPHA is supporting uh, during the legislative session. I would say, check it out, look at what they're advocating for, because as a member of the public, it's probably something that will impact you. Um, and hopefully, you know, it's going to impact you for the better. And it might be something that you think is worth advocating for as well. Um, and so I'd say, you know, don't just be a bystander either. You can get involved. Um, and if there's something you disagree with, you can let people know too. But, um, you know, I think it, it's so valuable to, to have this group of people working on behalf of the public and for the public. And um, I'm very thankful for, for this profession. Awesome. So you want to check us out? You can do so. Go to our website, www.mdpha.org. You have a question for us, a comment for us. You'd like to send in a contribution. You can do so. Our email, getinfo at mdpha.org. I am Lillian Agbeyegbe, your friendly community health educator. Excited to have concluded a debut edition of Your Public Health Professional and You, talking to Stephanie Clapper, the Deputy Director at the Maryland Healthcare for All Coalition. Until I come your way again next month, thank you and stay healthy.